Joining the conversation, Dr. David Klein of the Stages of Life Institute. You want to make sure that you're listening all the way through the segment so that you can get the contact information you need because there's not only the physician services, but also specialization. There's the esthetician. And, of course, there's the nutraceutical store that is quite handy, very, very efficiently done. And, Doctor, today we wanted to talk about, especially in today's medical climate, with the government getting in the way on every twist and turn, finding a good doctor, but keeping a good doctor. Well, it's getting more and more challenging to stay in practice. Okay, and every week you know, that, that, I, that I, I'm out there chunking it, doing what I need to do, I hear about another good physician, usually somebody at the peak of their career. They may be 55, 65 years of age. You know, doctors never used to retire that young, but mm-hmm. now they're calling it quits. They're Ouch. walking away. They are throwing in their keys picking up their, 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 their kit and leaving, and it's happening a lot. Okay, you know, I predicted this several years ago when they signed into law that, that High Tech Act of 2009, you know, Obama did this for us, did a brilliant job, and now that it's being implemented, the doctors are leaving because they, A, do not like what they're being told what to do, B, can't afford to do it, and C, don't have the time in the day to get it done. What does this mean? Right now, Medical practice is and has been under tremendous pressure. It's been under pressure to reduce prices. Oh, guess what? It's been done. It's been now well below the cost of doing business. So you can't make up for a loss every time in volume. But the documentation that goes along with this has become onerous. So the doctors are now sitting down with their computers, punching keys instead of looking at you. And you're wondering, you're thinking, why does this benefit them? Mm -hmm. The doctors are thinking very much the same thing. How does this benefit you? Because it doesn't. It doesn't benefit anybody but perhaps the government. What is the doctor doing? Mm. The doctor is king in data about you for somebody else's use and certainly has nothing to do with your medical care. But understand this. If the doctor doesn't do it, the doctor gets fined. Oh. If the doctor gets fined, the doctor goes home. So it ben- it, it, it's, it's, it's really um, a sick Uh, situation that's getting worse and worse and worse. Hopefully we'll get somebody in the White House that can undo it. I'm remaining hopeful, but not all that hopeful. So as these things go, finding a good physician is going to be a challenge. If you have a good physician now, what you need to do is to maintain this relationship and understand several things. One, the doctor is not the same as he used to be or she used to be and will not be the same way in the future because they have to do what they have to do in order to stay in practice. If the doctors are not doing this, watch what happens, because they may not be smart enough to realize what the future has in store. But each year, their reimbursement is going to be chopped by 3%. Ooh. Okay, 3% for not participating, not being up to snuff, as it were, for the federal data gathering system. 3% doesn't sound like a lot of money, but for the fact that the margins in a doctor's office might be as little as 9%. So that means that last year, one-third of the doctor's salary got taken away. This year, another third gets taken away. The year after that, another third gets taken away, in which case they're not drawing a paycheck and they don't come in again. And that's what's going to happen. That's what's happening now. So the least, um, let's say the least creative, the least resourceful, the least hardworking physicians left this year. Many Mm -hmm. of the ones that were getting a little bit older that could see it coming left last year. But it's going to be a two-year process where it's going to get harder and harder to find, uh, let's say, independent physicians. And what's that going to leave to you? That's going to leave going to the hospital. Right. Which, by the way, just so you know, tends to select towards the least capable physicians out there. Why? Because they tend to, attr- they tend to train abroad, they tend to train uh, poorly, and they tend to, to work very, very well in that sort of environment. Not something that you're likely to enjoy or really do well with. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Find yourself a good physician and take care of that doctor because that doctor may be the only person around that can take care of you. Well, you're looking at a difference. You know, it it takes even a layman can see that if you take a Dr. Klein who's responsible for the entire operation, the real estate, the taxes, the payroll, everything like that, on top of student loans if one happens to have them, Okay, or the doctor that just goes to work for the hospital and says, uh, see these 50 patients over the next three days. You know, that guy has very little weighing on his mind. No, and they don't show up. It, what's, what's interesting about somebody that has a clinic that's being supplied by somebody else, 
is they have sick days. They have personal days. <laughs> they have meeting days. They don't care if you're left waiting because if you don't show up or ever come back, they get paid the same anyway. It doesn't make any difference. It's like going if – if you, if you work for the DMV, I'm so terribly sorry – but if it's like going to the DMV, you're not going to go to the DMV and expect to get service like you do at Nordstrom's. It is just the way it's going to be. So the physicians are, in fact, right now about ready to give up. And they were out there shouting this, bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. Guess what? It turned out to be a bad idea. So there's going to be very few of us, if this trend would continue, you're going to see very few people have the same understanding, knowledgeable about them doctor. Because if you see a different doctor every time you walk into the clinic, he doesn't know your history, he doesn't know anything but what he sees on that chart or care. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is that is the uh, services are going to be diminished. You're going to go to somebody to take care of your ear. You're going to go to somebody that's going to take care of your genitalia. You're going to go to somebody who's going to take care of your toenail fungus, and you'll go to somebody else who will take care of, let's say, your hair loss. It doesn't make any sense to me. The family docs are having a very, very difficult time staying in practice. The general internists, same kind of a deal. So what do you do to stay in practice? You find procedures to do. They could be scopes. They could be angios. They could be all manners of surgery. But finding somebody to take care of you as a person doesn't pay. Mm -hmm. It hasn't for a long time. So when you go in there, don't be terribly shocked if you can't find somebody who's willing to do more than one problem per day. When people come into stages of life, we have a problem list. We do the best that we can to get it all done at one sitting. That isn't done very many places for a no. lot of reasons. Well, today we're going to talk about your blood pressure. If we're going to your diabetes next week. Okay. Well, why? Do you don't think the two are, are playing off against each other? In family practice, you used to deal with all of this all at one time, and what you did was you coordinated surgery, you coordinated radiology, you coordinated specialty intervention, but right now, it doesn't seem to work that way. You're not really allowed that. You are now being priced right out of the market, and the docs are leaving. In my little uh, part of the world, you know, my, my little community, my medical community, I'm the last doctor in there. It used to be full of doctors. Yeah. Now there's a lot of rental real estate. If you go by some of the local hospitals, you will see signs up for sale. For sale. They're selling the medical office buildings. They're selling the medical condos. It used to be a 10-year wait. You had to wait a long, long time to get a room in one of those places. To get an office was impossible. You had to know somebody. You had to be related to somebody. Somebody had to owe you a favor. Now it's how many months free do I get to sign on the contract? So the demand for medical real estate is in the tank, okay? Look around town. You will find lots and lots of mm -hmm. these offices open. This was never the case in the past, okay? It is getting worse by the month. So when you have your, when you ha if you have a family doc, bring them something. Bring them a bowl <laughs> of fruit, for something. God's sake. Yeah, say thank you once in a while. But one way or the other, it's, it's a dying breed, and one day, unfortunately— Okay, it may have died off entirely, and at that point, it will be too late. You will be getting your medical medical care just the same that you do at, at the DMV. Stand in line, take a number, and see who you see. I can walk into the stages of life on the times when I'm not there on an appointment. I can walk into the nutraceutical store, and I'm watching this guy, Dr. David Klein, walk patients out of the examining room, walking them to the door, if that be the case, or walking them into the nutraceutical store and helping them if it's picking out things that they, they want or need. Yeah. Now, where else is anybody going to find that, and are there doctors that still take pride in that? I don't know. You know, I, I would like to believe that there are, but you know that doctor's bag, that black bag that doctors used to carry? Marcus Welby. Right. Remember that little bag? I still have my bag. You know, what's interesting about that black bag is it wasn't there, okay, to carry your lunch. Okay, it was there to carry <laughs> medicines to the patients at their homes. That's what it was all about. Okay, it wasn't until the 1960s that pharmacies actually supplanted. They replaced the doctor's offices as to where you went to get your medications. So at stages of life, when I, when I leave the office with somebody, I walk them to the, the back area, to the checkout, and all the while I'm, I'm examining them, all the while I'm teaching them, and all the while I'm making sure that their time is well spent. And so why kill that time sitting down and doing, you know, doing something else? So that's why I do what I do. 
it is very, very valuable uh, experience to the patient to, to continue the dialogue for as long as is possible until the bell rings. And you can begin the dialogue by visiting the stages of life, whether it just be the nutraceutical store or trying to get a place on the doctor's roster of patients. So, Robin, what do we do? Give us a call at 407-679-3337. Check us out on the web at stagesoflife.net. Come into the health store. It's open Monday through Thursday, 8 to 5, same as our office hours. Uh, we are located in Longwood at 1917 Booth Circle. That's right off of I-4 and 434. And we're also on Facebook at Stages of Life Medical Institute.